Ladies and gents, welcome to Jugax and this is Lockheed unveils world's most advanced drone fighter, Vactis. Bunch of sandbox. I saw the F-47's production started and in, he, in that he talked about like new Vectis is going to be one of those drones that's going to accompany F-47 and I'm guess F-35 as well. Yeah, Sandbox making like a lot of videos recently uh, about news. I'm pretty sure there's also a video about F-22 might still continue production, which is weird. I'm pretty sure the whole point of that was F-22, you can't make more F-22 since production was stopped, but I guess they're re reopening it. But yeah, the drones is like the future, isn't it? Like drones is one of those things like you don't have to worry about human being in it. So you can like innovate in a many way that you can't do it with a proper plane. So yeah, Lockheed Martin could just make something insane, right? We assume drones are going to be one of those things like, okay, F-47 F is going to be untouchable. Or drones are going to be something that supplements it. For all we know, drones could advance at a level that it might rival F-47 itself. And F-47 just is like a mother center. While these drones like Vectis and things is just powerhouse, right? We don't know. So it's going to be interesting. That's always fun. And just unveiled what promises to be the most advanced fighter drone ever built. Dubbed Vectis, this collaborative combat aircraft, as the Air Force knows them, is said to integrate 5th and 6th generation stealth fighter technology into a single low observable combat drone as either a standalone system or as a part of an integrated network in support of crewed fighters or bombers or other assets. In other words, it aims to be a loyal wingman drone that is so advanced and capable that it doesn't need to serve as a wingman at all, and can instead execute assigned missions with minimal oversight, leveraging its advanced sensor suite, which looks awfully similar to the F-35's electro-optical targeting system in this footage released by Lockheed, and extreme low observability to provide functionality that might be more akin to today's fifth-generation fighters than to the lower-cost CCA drones that are currently in testing to fly alongside them. And that is by design. Lockheed sees their Vectis drone as the high-end portion of an autonomous aircraft mix, which would see the battle space flooded with platforms ranging from Lockheed's own sensor-packed and inexpensive common multi-mission trucks, or Comets, which are effectively single-use cruise missiles that could carry sensors or electronic warfare capabilities instead. Then to larger, more capable mid-range platforms like the General Atomics YFQ-42 and Anduril's YFQ-44 already in flight testing, and finally to high-end or exquisite drone platforms like the Vectis and maybe Northrop Grumman's RQ-180 high-altitude ISR aircraft. And speaking of the YFQ. Yeah, those, those are all Ford F-150s. Well, this is Mercedes G-Wagon. That's what this is. High-end. 42 and 44, Lockheed actually did compete for that first tranche of CCA contracts awarded by the Air Force, but ultimately lost to General Atomics and Anduril because their proposal was deemed too gold-plated, which is a common aerospace term for being too high-end for what the branch was looking for in its first batch of CCAs yeah. headed for service. USA has this issue of cost. Usually make because obviously like USA is rich, but when it comes to like actual warfare, you need a lot of things. I guess people, military usually don't think of that. So when it comes down to actual war and the estimate comes, oh, by the way, this is going to cost trillions. And people are like, okay, let's all back down here. They have been changing that recently with recent generation. Plan for 2030, right? So all the new thing is happening. They're trying to make it cheaper. They have to, like B2 were costly, but B21 has to be cheaper. F-47 eventually is going to be much cheaper and shit like that is working a lot. Because USA has this problem of things costing a lot. I mean, it makes sense why it costs a lot. But well, that's the point. Do we need all these things? That's the question being asked. But you still need top gener top of the line, something like Vectis, even if you don't buy a lot of it. You still need them in your arsenal. So that's what this is. Now, since then, Lockheed's John Clark has acknowledged that their CCA proposal was much stealthier and had much more advanced autonomy than the Air Force was looking for in its Tranche 1 CCA platforms, making it more expensive than the other offerings. It seems likely, then, that Vectis builds off of that gold-plated CCA design. 
Now, the first tranche of CCA drones in testing are air-to-air -air focused platforms, each said to be capable of carrying their own pair of AIM-120 AMRAAM air-to-air missiles. Lockheed's Vectus design, on the other hand, is said to be a truly multi-role fighter platform, capable of offensive and defensive counter-air, intelligence surveillance and reconnaissance operations, and air-to-ground combat operations. This okay, you know what? Somebody comment down because I'm confused about this. People like Lockheed, General, uh, you know, like, yeah, that General Dino, yeah, and Andrew and all these people creates an actual thing. And then U.S. military gives contract to one of them. So others who invested all this, like R&D takes fucking money. It doesn't just, something is just not made, right? People just assume you just made one of it. Yeah, but they may need to make that one functional. R&D takes a lot of money, engineering, science, trial and error. So they're just going to absorb the money themselves. Like, oh, I guess that's business. So if Lockheed, let's just say they created Vectis. If U.S. military doesn't give them contract, all the research and development that went into Vectis, uh, just like this Lockheed will just going to absorb that. That's not really good business model. Is, is there a program like U.S. military gives all of them money just for R&D, but in the end, they're going to decide who gets the contract. Is that what it is? The specifics of Vectis are, however, pretty tough to come by. Skunk Works president O.J. Sanchez described it as a Group 5 uncrewed aerial system, the largest category of drones and remotely piloted aircraft that includes pretty much all uncrewed platforms that weigh more than 1,320 pounds and operate at altitudes above 18,000 feet. Sanchez did, however, state that this Vectis drone is smaller than an F-16 Fighting Falcon. Now, the Vectis itself carries a stealthy Lambda Delta wing and a dorsal-mounted air intake with an S-duct behind it and exhaust shrouding near the back, as shown in a brief cutaway in Lockheed's video. And this all points toward taking significant pains to reduce both radar and infrared detectability, while that dorsal mounted intake might also suggest a high operating altitude or service ceiling. With most adversary fighters and, of course, surface based air defenses broadcasting their radar from well below where the intake wouldn't have much impact on the fighter's radar return. But maybe the most important thing to relay about this new stealth drone is that, as far as Lockheed is saying, it doesn't really exist yet, or at least not in the physical world. This jet has already seen a fair bit of testing in a digital environment, including cooperative operations with simulated F-22s and F-35s. But Lockheed doesn't expect it to take to the real skies, for another two years or so. So as more information surfaces about Vectis, you can rest assured I'll be digging into it. Hey guys, two quick save rounds before I go. The first is that there's obviously tons of history and context that all led Lockheed Martin to this new Vectis drone program. And I'd love to dive into all that for an episode of Air Power if you're interested, because I wouldn't be able to give you a ton of new information about the drone itself we can only really work with what's been released, but I could dive into the program's funneling technology toward it and the historical efforts that ultimately led to it. And if you're interested, I'll get to work right away. So just let me know in the comments below. And the second thing is that we are so close to reaching our goal of a half a million subscribers before the end of this month. And I really appreciate everyone who's helped us get this far. If you haven't subscribed yet and you are so inclined, it would mean a ton to me and my whole team if you could click subscribe down below. It's not a big deal for you, but it is a huge deal for us. Either way. Yeah, he's at 498,000. Why is he not getting subscribed? Like this was three weeks ago. Like, I don't know, like soon we get like multi-thousand subscriber a month. He's at half a million. I don't know how subscriber things work, man. Like nowadays, like subscribers have slowed down. Depends on what type of content you make, I guess. I don't know. But yeah. I think in one of those Vectis thing is the Lockheed is still going on if U.S. military doesn't give them contract because they're assuming we are just going to build on top of this in the future. So when U.S. military eventually does come around 10 years from now, like we need absolute best, Lockheed doesn't have to start from the, you know start from the scratch. They're already building on on this, assuming in the future U.S. will want it or something. I don't know. I'm pretty sure Lockheed basically takes contract from other countries as well, like U.K. and like allied countries, obviously. 
uh, there are still i'm pretty sure like they can't defy u.s militaries uh who's allies and who's not it's not like they're gonna make weapons from china or something for china so yeah they japan uk i'm pretty sure they take contracts for them as well so something like this like they have that right so maybe in the future somebody will give them a contract who knows right, well there was lockheed unveils world's most advanced drone fighter vectus <laughs> with gold plated i guess why not <laughs> this is expensive g-wagon of off-road cars i guess or range rover which is more costly and the, uh, where i am like they both both cost the same thing g-wagon and range rovers i don't know i'm pretty sure like out, uh, around in the world g-wagon is more costly even though tata owns land rovers some of land rovers are still costly here which is weird all right i'll see you next time